Ladies and gentlemen, by transcription, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. <laughs> like this. Really, I do. You ever been in a lineup before, Miss Larkin? I should say not. But I feel like such a fool, Lieutenant. Yeah. How long will it take? Yeah. Well, that'll depend on which line the suspect appears. Well, heavens, can't they put him in the first line or something? Well, maybe they will. I want you to tell me. Oh. Well, is that disinfectant I smell? Mm-hmm. Certainly strong. Be glad when this whole thing's over. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, keep it moving, boys, right over to the end of the stage. Come on, that's right, all the way over to the end. Take your hands out of your pockets, turn and face the front. When I call your number, I want you to step out and talk up. Stand up straight. Answer my questions in a good, loud voice so the people in the back of the room can hear you. When I ask you where you live, I want the address you slept at last night. Okay? All right, number one, Connie Bush. Burglary. Where do you live? 417 West 99. For how long? Since Tuesday. Where'd you live before that? The White Plains, New York. What do you do for a living, Connie? I'm a wood finisher. You have a car? Yeah. Well, what kind? What color? A uh, 49 Chevy convertible, blue. Anyone with you when you were arrested? Yeah, Vivian Johnson. Have any weapons on you? No. All right, number two, Dale Gagan, murder. Where do you live, Dale? I live with the darkest. That, that Come old on, speak man up, Dale. Where do you live? Yeah. The darkest. Well, I What's never... That? place on 2nd Street where they have rooms. What's the number, Dale? Well, I don't know. I just know the place when I see it. It's a sort of a white building. How long you lived there? On and off, maybe three years. Where'd you live before that? Prison. State Correction Home, Bonneville. Okay, Dale. Number three, Cliff Barry, open charge. Where do you live, Cliff? Did you hear the question? I heard it, Sergeant. I understand that I'm not compelled to answer your questions. I'm not compelling you. I'm asking you to cooperate. The questions you ask might intimidate me. Look, the public defender happens to be standing in the back of this room. If I get out of line, he'll let me know, Cliff. Now, come on. Tell the folks where you live. I can't see anything out there. Take my word for it. Now, I want to know where you live, what kind of work you do, who you were arrested with, if anybody whether you had any weapons or whether you own a car, okay? I'd rather not answer you, Sergeant. Okay, number four, Florian Barth, forgery. We're... 1647 Ray Street, apartment three, I'm a salesman. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no guns, no car, okay? Anything else you'd like to volunteer? No, nope, I got my rights. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? Any questions or identifications? Hold number three out for me, Sergeant. Number three. Number four. That's him, I think. Florian Barth. I'm not sure, but I think... Anyone else? Uh, hold number four, Sergeant. Yes, Lieutenant. That all? Okay. Barth and Gagan, stay here. The rest of you are back where you came from. I'm not exactly sure, but it certainly looks like him. Well, we'll find out. All right, up to the center, Florian. Come on, right out under the light. 
I said, now do a quarter turn. Now a full quarter turn. Uh, hold it, hold it. Sure looks like him from the side, too. Mm -hmm. Could you ask him to say Chesapeake? Have him say Chesapeake, Matt. All right, Florian, they want you to say Chesapeake. Yeah, that's Chesapeake. How about say it louder? Chesapeake! What is this, anyhow? Never mind. Could I hear him say, I've got to be in Cedar Rapids tomorrow night? Have him say, I've got to be in Cedar Rapids tomorrow night. Say, I've got to be in Cedar Rapids tomorrow night. Well, I've got to be in Cedar Rapids tomorrow night. Once more. I've got to be in Cedar Rapids tomorrow night. Any marks or scars on him, Sergeant? Well, there's a mole on his left cheek, sir. Turn your head here. That's about it, Lieutenant. Well, Miss Larkin? That's him, Lieutenant. That's the man who gave me that bum check. Well, I thought I was all finished. Well, you are, practically. Just want you to fill out a verification card. Yeah, here they are. Do you like it? Hmm? Do you like being a policeman? Oh, yeah. Now, just fill out your name and address, the date and the time. Okay. Yeah, I think this has some ink in it. This about, uh, am I willing to appear in court? Yes, in case there's a preliminary hearing. You'd be asked to appear before a magistrate and testify at the same time we present the complaint. Chances are you won't be called at all. Oh. He'll probably waive his right and plead guilty. From there on, it'll go straight to Superior Court for decision. Well, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. Here. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming down tonight, Miss Larkin. I knew you took time off from your work to do it, and we certainly appreciate it. Oh, it wasn't so bad. As a matter of fact, very interesting... Besides, I should have my head examined for letting that guy give me a bad check. Well, don't feel too badly. A lot of people have been taken in just like you in the last three months. It's been passing bad checks all over town. Something like $4,200 worth last month alone. Were they all as dumb as I was? <laughs> well, nicely dressed man runs up a bill and wants to pay for it with a legitimate-looking payroll check. He has what seems to be proper identification and... Well, that's about it. <laughs> you forgot that smile he flashed around. Oh, well. Want me to call your cab? No, no, I've got my own car in the lot. Uh, you know, that old man in the lineup tonight, the one up for murder, I'm curious, who did he kill? Another old man. How? Beat him to death with a shovel. He got in an argument over a game of checkers. Some world, huh? <laughs> Some world. Good night. Good night. Hi, man. Hi. Got a report from handwriting. Mm-hmm. Checks, huh? Mm-hmm. Hey, Ben. Molly's sister's going to be in town this weekend. Which sister? Nellie, her youngest one. You've never met her, Ben. Is she from Muncie, too? Mm-hmm. She's been living in Detroit. Works for an advertising agency. She's on her way to New York on business. A cogger single. Oh, Ben, Molly asked me to ask you. Nellie's a real nice girl, Ben. You'll like her. Honest. You ever met her? N no, but I've seen pictures of her, and Molly says she's... Uh... Florian Bartles, huh? Yeah, uh, just in time. Okay, boss. Hi, Lieutenant. Sergeant. Hello, boss. Grab a chair. Thank you. Well, Florian... You've been identified. You want to make a statement and get this over with in a hurry? Oh, you kidding. Your handwriting's been identified and your face has been identified. So you can see I'm not kidding, Florian. I can explain anything you want to explain. Just ask me. Okay, let's start with that nice apartment of yours. I'm a good salesman. Not according to that sewing machine company. They say you hardly turn over one machine a month. Yeah, I got other sources. I do a mail order business, too. How much do you make? Oh, enough. How much is that? Oh, sometimes four, five, maybe six hundred a month. Depends on how hard I work. Who printed up your checks? What checks? The checks you've been passing all over town. Wrong guy. Where were you the night before you were arrested? What time? Say about uh, 10.30. Home? Doing what? Reading a book. What book? From here to eternity. How far you get? Oh, maybe a hundred pages. 
Where'd you get the book? What do you mean, where'd I get the book? I bought it. Where? Some bookshop downtown. That night? A couple of months ago. How late did you read? Oh, almost midnight, I guess. I don't know. And then you went to bed? Yeah. That doesn't exactly check. Miss Larkin, the cashier at the Peacock Restaurant, says you were in there from 10.30 to 12, handing her a bad check. Miss Larkin's a liar. I don't even know where the Peacock is. It's out on Federal Boulevard, a nice place. Your kind of place, Florian. Well, I'll drop out sometime and look it over. Thank you. How about a smoke? No. Okay, I'll get along without it. What do you think of Jones' book? Huh? From Here to Eternity. A man named Jones wrote it. Huh. That seems okay. Do you like Sergeant Pruitt? Yeah, 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 yeah. How about Private Warden? What do you want me to do? Give you a book review? No. Just correct me, Florian. Pruitt's a private, and Warden's a sergeant in that book. Uh, detail. What, uh, what did you have for dinner that night? Oh, how would I know? If you don't, who would? I don't. They have a specialty of the peacock, cracked crab. Everybody gets uh, it. I hate crab. Miss Larkin said you had crab that night. You already know what I think of what Miss Larkin says. Got to make a statement? If I didn't have a sense of humor, I'd be yelling for a lawyer. Now, you better start yelling. Huh? Huh? I'm presenting a complaint first thing in the morning. You've got five days to get a lawyer. Take him away, man. Uh, hello, Ben. Hello, Bill. Relax. Yeah. I'm holding this complaint on Florian Barth you sent upstairs this morning. Well, wasn't there enough stuff with the handwriting and identification? Oh, well, seemed to be Ben, but I just want to make sure we can get an indictment. Well, this bird's been passing wallpaper all over town. What's the kick? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, excuse me, Ben. Captain Waldo. Uh, put him on. Okay. 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 All right, send it over to Ben Guthrie's office. Bye-bye. Uh, that's it, Ben. Handwriting just verified a new check turned in this morning by a victim named Caristi. They say it's Florian Barth's signature. You've had him in custody almost a week, haven't you? Yeah. Check was passed last night. What do you think? Beats me. It's time for everyone to do some important fall house cleaning. House cleaning which may save your home and the lives of your family. You can eliminate the causes of home fires by cleaning out all debris, by repairing all worn or frayed electric wiring immediately, and by putting matches out of the reach of children. And be sure to do your cleaning with non-inflammable fluids. <laughs> J, a metal case at 2837 Clyde Place. See the woman. 33, a 586 Wine and still questioning Bob? Curtis. Yeah. See the man. 1516. There it is, Ben. Hey. I've been here before. I used to have a pretty good piano player, Harry, uh, uh, Harry something. Can you see anything? Not much. Me neither. Coming out of the sun. <laughs> Hello, boys. What's it going to be? Uh, we're looking for a Mr. Caristi. Caristo. I'm uh, Benito Caristo. You the police? Yeah. This is Sergeant Greb. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. Glad to meet you. Uh, come on down to this end. It's much quieter. you like something? Uh, no, thanks. No, thanks. Yeah, me neither. Can't stand to drink in the daytime. But what, what about a smoke? Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I don't know whether I have much to tell you or not. You see, he came in a couple of nights ago. He seemed like a nice fellow. Said he was in the insurance business. How long was he here? Almost an hour. Well, then you got a good look at him. Good look? Sure I did. He sat right there on that stool. Well, tell us about the check. 
Well, when he asked me to cash a check, I told him I don't cash personal checks for anybody. He said there was a commission check, and he pulled it out of his pocket. Well, it was issued by some insurance company on a local bank. It had his name on it, his social security and deductions. They looked uh, good to me. They have looked good to a lot of people. Did you ask him for any further identification? No, no, I didn't. Mm. Did he endorse the check right here? Uh, yeah. Are you sure? No. no. Come to think of it... Uh... Do you think it was already endorsed when he took it out of his pocket? Well, uh, it could have been. Tell us what he looked like. It was nice looking, as I said. Uh, tall, maybe six feet or better. How old? Oh, 35. How much would you say he weighed? Well, not over 160. Mm, what was the color of his hair? I couldn't say for sure. He kept his hat on all the time. I imagine it was dark brown or black. He, he was the dark complexed. What color were his eyes? Dark, I guess. Any marks or scars? No. Anything else? Jewelry? Cufflinks? A watch? A ring? Well, he might have been wearing all of those, but... Uh, hey, Benny. How's about it? Uh, oh, I'll be right back, fellas. All, all right. right. Well, that could be Bart. But it's a cinch she wasn't here drinking a scotch two nights ago. Mm, sounds like a sister act. Maybe the handwriting guys are wrong. Well, I'll stick with them. Mm, so will I. Sorry I kept you waiting. Uh, now, is there anything more I can tell you? Well, uh, this is a picture of a man we're holding now. Ever see him before? Mm, no, no, that isn't him. But it could be him, sort of. That's what we thought. Can you get away from here for a while? Well, you, you mean right now? Yeah. Well, I guess I can call my brother and let him take over this afternoon. Call him. Hi. Too early? No, three more just came in. That makes 12 men. Couldn't get a hold of any more. Oh, 12 will be enough. This is Mr. Caristi, Sergeant Quine. Hello. How do you do? Mr. Caristi's number 13. You aren't superstitious, are you? Uh, no, no. You can just grab a chair there anyway, Mr. Caristi. This won't take long. Okay. I thought Matt was with you, Pam. He's across the hall with Asher. Oh, there. Hi, Tom. Oh, hello, Ben Quine. Hi. Here we got ourselves a problem. Looks like it, Tom. You ready to go to work? Yep. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen... I'm sorry to bother all you people by having you come down here again, but uh, you've all been stung with bad checks, and we want to bring you up to date on what's happening. We're holding a man now who's been identified as a check passer. Our handwriting department has confirmed it. He's the same man some of you were unable to identify when we asked you to pick him out of the line this week. However, we're pretty sure there's more than one man involved. The general description of both men is just about the same. That's why Mr. Thompson's here. Uh, this is Mr. Thompson. I suppose all of you know that a composite picture is drawn from detailed information about the facial characteristics of a person. Well, that's Mr. Thompson's job in our department. He's pretty good at it, too. But he needs the cooperation of every one of you. He'll sit and listen for hours to what you have to say about the man who gave you those bad checks. That right, Tommy? That's about it, Lieutenant. Okay. All yours. Now, Come all on, of you people who saw the suspect within the last two weeks, raise your hands. All of those who saw him within the last month. Coffee, Ben? Yeah, uh, let's go in here first. Okay. We know you've been working with someone else, Bart. Now, come on, come on. Who is this other guy? Oh, you're all wet. Now, nah. oh, you want something, Ben? No. Did you make the checks up in batches and then take turns passing them? What checks? These checks, these checks right here in my hand. I never saw them before in my life. Who's the other guy? There isn't any other guy. Look, I haven't had a drink of water for two hours. Neither have I. Come on, tell us about the other guy. I can last as long as you two or anybody else you got down here in this crummy place. How much did you pay for that apartment? 185. How long have you two lived Two years. There? Okay, How let's go, Quine. I worked for been going on, on all day. You know, I don't think that guy's going to say much. I'm afraid not. Well, maybe it won't make any difference. <laughs> Hi. Well, she gets in tonight. Who? Nellie. Molly's sister. Oh. 
Ben. Uh, this is my night for the fights. Oh, look, Ben, she's only going to be in town one night. You might like her. <clears throat> Tommy finish yet? Yeah, he said he'd call me. Uh, Bart isn't making things very easy. You look beat. Three hours with that guy, and I was asking myself questions. He's not going to be easy, Ben. Well, that's why we're doing things the hard way. All that we have now, Ben? Yeah, Quinn. Well, Crockett pinned out a type of machine used on those checks. Good. Turned out to be a local manufacturing outfit called the Make Peace Printing Company. You talked to him yet? Uh-huh. I was out there this morning. They make all sorts of printing equipment. The general manager's quite an expert. He says those checks were all done up on what he calls a, a A41 model. What's that, Quine? Well, it's a little portable check-making machine. They made them for about two years now. They sell them to firms that have small payrolls. Hey, it might be somebody in an accounting department who could do it, Ben. No, no, no. At least it'd be pretty hard, Matt. The make piece people set them up for the individual firm, type and all. It'd be hard to change the type, and every one of those checks has a different company name on it. Mm. Did you get a list of all the people in town who bought those machines? Uh-huh. 108 firms. Hi, Asher. You finished? Mm-hmm. Just got them out of photographic. Well, this is what they say he looks like. Hmm. Gosh. Think it's dream stuff? No. Hmm. You sure got it all over Bath, wouldn't you say, Ben? Maybe. Let's get him and find out. It's a very handy little outfit. Saves a lot of time. I would have bought the big model, but uh, right in here, gentlemen. But the little one's good enough for my office. And we just want a sample off the machine. We're glad to help in any way. Oh, uh, Mr. Blair. Yes, Mr. Hayes. Uh, these two gentlemen are from the police department. Lieutenant Guthrie, Sergeant Greb, is it? Yes, Greb. Uh, w would you mind showing them our checking machine? Well, this is it right here. Uh, would you mind running one off for us? Oh, it's all right, Mr. Blair. Just cancel the number when it comes out, you know. All right, sir. Well, it's, it's electric, and all you do is set the amount here like this. And then you uh, run it off like this. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Hmm. Uh, may we keep that sample? Oh, sure, sure. Anything else I can do? Do you have a man working for you who looks something like this? No. Uh, B Mr. Blair, does he resemble anyone you know? No. Anyone who might have worked here, Mr. Hastings, at one time or another? No, no, no. No, no. sir. All right, thanks for your cooperation. Ma'am. Yeah, Klein? Uh, Mr. Kendrick's in your office. Is that the man from the printing company? Uh-huh. He's been working with us all day looking at samples from those machines. Mr. Kendricks, this is Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Greb. Hello. Glad to meet you both. It's nice of you to give us a hand, Mr. Kendricks. Glad to do it. My company feels a little abashed that one of our machines is involved in all this. Did you see all the samples we brought in, Mr. Kendricks? Yes, I did, Sergeant. I was just explaining to Sergeant Quine that I don't think any of those bad checks were printed on any of the machines in town. Oh? Of course, that's just after a hasty survey of the situation... But there's nothing outstanding on any of the samples brought in to tie them up with the same machine that printed the bad checks. Hmm. You've gone over all of them? Every one. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I wish I had better news for you. I'll go over them again if you like. Well, we want to be sure. Of course. There were only 108 of them sold in this city? We rechecked our sales department on that, yes. Uh-huh. And no others that you might not have a record on? No others, Sergeant. Uh, what about samples? Samples? Well, you know, salesmen have samples, don't they? Uh, when you first put them on the market, you... I just happened to think there is one machine that's not accounted for. We had a man on our sales staff two or three years ago, name of Fisher, Ed Fisher. Seemed like a nice chap, but he didn't work out. He got in an argument with a customer, and we had to let him go. He never did return the sample machine we issued to him. Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mr. Kendricks, would you remember the salesman if you saw him? Oh, I think so. Well, uh, is this him, Mr. Kendricks? Why, why, yes. Yes, that's him. <sighs> yes, Mr. Fisher? 
That's right. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, police. Oh. Well, uh, yes. We've had quite a time finding you. I, I, I suppose so, yes. Did Florian tell you... Well, Florian didn't say a word about you. You want to get a coat? Yes. Come in. I, I'm sort of surprised if Florian didn't say anything. We'll tell you all about it. Will I have an opportunity to come back here before... Well, I mean... Well, to close my house and take care of some personal matters. You'll probably get out on bail. Well, I, I guess I'm ready. Okay, in there. I really never thought I'd be caught. Didn't you? No, I, I didn't. I really didn't. Well, now you know. The lineup where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? <laughs> You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. <coughs> Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, was written by E. Jack Newman with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Jeanette Nolan, High Everback, Herb Butterfield, Gil Stratton Jr., Howard McNear, Peter Leeds, Ray Hartman, and Jay Novello. The Lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Almost three and a half million young men in our armed forces have given up a lot for you. They've given up a way of life they enjoyed so you could remain safe. You can back them up by sharing in the defense effort, by investing regularly in United States defense bonds. Defense bonds do two things for you. First, they help defend the freedoms you cherish. Second, they ensure your own personal future. Start now to invest regularly in United States defense bonds. <laughs> Bon Monroe's back from vacation. Yes, on most of these same CBS radio stations, you can again make the Bon Monroe Show a singing, dancing date every Saturday night. Bon, the Moon Maids, the Moon Man, and Ziggy Talent, plus singing guests, will be very truly yours this Saturday night on CBS Radio. Don't miss them. Dan Coverly speaking, and remember, the comedy treat that can't be beat is Jack Benny Time, Sunday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>